Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at the feature race at Del Mar on Saturday. Let's throw up the field for race number 10. It's the grade one Clement L. Hirsch. Phillies and mares going a mile and a 16th. $400,000 is the purse. We have one of the best Philly and mares in the country. The number two, Adair Manor, three to five for trainer Bob Baffert, seeking her third consecutive victory. Good job by the race office here with Adair Manor being the big name. You would have thought a lot of people would have been scared away from maybe entering here, but still have seven rivals facing Adair Manor. And uh, for her, obviously, she sort of got the test, I think, two starts back at Oakland Park, having a ship to the East Coast. But the way that she won, she made it look easy and followed it up with another big win at Santa Anita. So she frankly and simply is the horse to beat. And she was very good last year as a four-year-old. It's possible she's come back even bigger and better this year at five. And her game is speed. We throw up our time form U.S. pace projector. And there's a Dare Manor expected to be up and on the lead, along with Olivia Twist, who's a stretch-out sprinter, but hardly a blazer. Flying Connection is also going to stretch out in distance. And the last time she took on a Dare Manor, she settled off of the pace. Maybe they'll get a little more aggressive this time. I completely agree with that. And I think Olivia Twist, you mentioned, you know, she hasn't been as forward in her last two, but they did go sub 44 at low sell in that most recent outing. So I think she's going to have to go also being a little bit more towards the outside of the starting gate. But you mentioned at Adair Manor, that's been sort of her good thing, right? Having that early foot has really put her into these races early. Does she need the lead? Not necessarily. We saw her close from off of it in the Beholder Mile. But I do think looking at the way this race is going to set up for her, she will be quick from the gate. If the pace is fast and time form U.S. believes it will favor front runners, keep an eye on the three Scylla, who's tactical and progressive. And it's interesting that Bill Mott is going to ship out to the West Coast. You'll note the LP chiclet. That indicates she has the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. We'll get to Scylla in a bit, but we'll start our discussion with the number one flying connection. This is a multiple stakes winner that's done some pretty good things. She was second in the Apple Blossom, albeit no match for Adair Manor. She then ran just fine in the Derby Distaff behind Vava, who's probably the best Philly and Mare dirt sprinter in the country right now. And then last time out in the Better Roses, watching the races at Aqueduct that day, I just thought speed did very well, and she couldn't get forward. It did, and the winner was able to take them on the front end, even though the horses kind of behind her were able to close. I also just wonder, you know, with all the traveling she had done, had that burned her out just a little bit? So she's had some time to regroup. Now, her record at Del Mar isn't the greatest, but... She does have that runner-up finish there uh, last year in September of 2023 when she was a nice second behind ceiling. Crusher was much the best in that event. So curious to see what she'll be able to do. She's had some performances here and there, Dan, that she's been able to pop some big races when unexpected. Adair Manners won 9 of 17, including her most recent start, the grade 2 Santa Margarita. It doesn't get any easier than this. Four horse field, loose speed. She's one to 20. She goes to the front and she just makes them pay. 99 buyer speed figure on the heels of two triple digit buyer performances. She's just been very good for Bob Baffert. And the way things are going right now with idiomatic sort of perhaps going a little bit off form in her last couple of races, she's on the cusp of being the best Philly and Mare turf runner in the country. Dirt I runner think, in the country. I think so. I mean, looking at her so far in her career, I brought up the Oakland Park race, you know, kind of having to ship back to the East Coast because in the past she had some good performances, but also some lackluster ones. And I do think she's just gotten better with age and um, she crushed that field and she beat horses like Flying Connection and some other nice runners in there as well. And she didn't hook a big field as we saw last time out, but she was in front of Coffee and Bed, who she will face again and go down the page. She's always gotten the better of Desert Dawn in the past as well. So I think just looking at the form that she's in, I find her extremely tough to go against in this spot. I like the way Bill Mott's handled the beautifully bred Judmont homebred, the three Scylla. She's won her last three starts while incrementally stepping up in class. And now she gets the big test shipping out to the West Coast. She scored the Fleur de Lis last time out, although it could be argued that the runner-up shotgun Hottie had a more difficult trip, sort of being pinched down on the inside. But Scylla seems to be learning. Now she needs to take a slight step forward on a buyer speed figure scale, but she's so lightly raced, it's not out of the question. Very lightly raced, and you can see they're very patient, just had those two starts as a three-year-old filly, and now as a four-year-old filly, 
to me, she's done very little wrong, even looking at her third place finish at Keeneland back in the spring. I think she had to be a little further back than she necessarily liked. And then uh, at Churchill, the mile and an eighth worked out beautifully for her. Plus, she had a little bit left in the end to hold off shotgun hottie. So I think from a um, lack of experience standpoint, she's really been able to develop with those just seven starts under her belt. And this will be a huge test for her. Now she's going to go from the grade two to the grade one company, and she has to just face mares that are more seasoned than her. The four is Coffee in Bed, who took an Adair Manor less edition of the Santa Maria two starts back, going the mile in a 16th distance. She ran fine last time out. She tried her best. Adair Manor just had everything her own way in the Santa Margarita short field. Coffee in Bed is the kind of filly that needs a little bit of pace up front, and she wasn't going to get that in that situation. No, she certainly wasn't. And she still tried to run on there, but it just wasn't going to work out for her. And sometimes when you look at those short fields, that's what you have to work with. It becomes more of a strategy than anything. And to be second best behind her, um, I, I don't think it was a bad performance. I liked her effort before that, where she ended up getting the job done and I was towards the back of the pack early on in that grade two event. So she's one, I think, in here to me, maybe a share at best. But her last two, it, she seems like she's gotten better with each of her starts. Desert Dawn, the number five, is so honest. It just is a shame that she walks into the paddock. She sees Adair Manor more often than not, and Adair Manor is just better than she is. She's traded a couple of decisions with Coffee in Bed this year. A good performance last time out when third in the Santa Maria. Uh, she always has a puncher's chance if you give her pace. I'm just not sure this race sets up very well for her. But to me, she's the kind of horse at a big price that you can use underneath in single race exotics. Absolutely. I think that's a good spot to use her. I think looking at her performances this year, the Beholder Mile, she fell flat in that race. But I like that at least since then, she had that one effort. She was a good third. She only missed by three quarters. You talked about maybe needing some pace here to run at. She's going to need that. And she got a little bit of pace in that race. And I don't mind that she's been put on the shelf for a while in terms of uh, what you've seen in the mornings. The last drill, I think, looking at horses propping for this race really is a standout 58 and two. I mean, that's just extremely fast work. And in the past, you know, we've seen her uh, maybe need a race off the layoff, but I'm just curious to see if the pace is hot enough in here. Can she get a piece at a price? I think so. Jeff Mullins got away with dangling the six sugar fish in for $40,000, four starts back. She didn't win that race, but she's been super in her three subsequent tries, including her most recent start this race. The grade two summertime Oaks against fellow three-year-old fillies. And she got, uh, she did not break well from the gate at all in this race. After that, the trip was good and she just dominates a pretty strong field. Nothing like you is a pretty good filly. And Sugar Fish just humiliated her on this day. Uh, confident movement by Mullins putting her in against older horses. Yeah, and I thought it was a confident move just to see her last three races, right? She was in a race, I made an optional for 40. She crushed it. Then she went to that first level. She stretched out and she stretched out a little bit again. And she's just been very, very dazzling in those. Now, uh, we know kind of the quality she faced last time out. It was okay, but it was a really compact field. That might be the issue with the race, but you still can't knock her for how easy she won. So why not put her in a spot like this? I think the biggest thing, though, is she is a three-year-old filly, and she has to face older. Olivia Twist is the number seven. She was fourth last time out in the Great Lady M, off of a slight layoff facing a very sharp horse in Southern California, Sweet Azteca. I'm curious as to see how she classes up with these horses. She was a stakes winner at a mile as a two-year-old. She's a big price on the tote. She has to do better from a speed figure standpoint. Certainly. Um, her last four, even if you throw the turf race and they've all been in the 70s and, and even a 60, which isn't really going to make an impact here. And I'm just curious to see her as well. I think the big thing is she has to stretch out in distance, go out to a mile and a 16th and you go in her past performances and you look at her races. She's gone longer. She does have a third in the fantasy back in 2023, but that race is so far behind. So I have uh, reservations here from a class standpoint and a distance standpoint. And pretty mischievous, the number eight was a super three-year-old filly last year, multiple graded stakes winner. She's had two races to run herself back into shape this year. We're going to take a look at her performance in the Ogden Phipps last time out, a grade one where she was in against randomized and idiomatic, two of the best older horses in the country. And pretty mischievous, as you saw, cut the corner into the stretch, was in with a big look, and then just couldn't step with the top two. Do you feel that maybe she's not as good this year as she was last? Or are you saying she's ready for her best now in her third start of the form cycle? I could go either way. I'm hoping that she can take the step forward, right? As you mentioned, third start off the layoff. But I will say you look at her. She got started late in her two-year-old campaign. 
she really never had breaks or significant breaks from two to three. And they finally put her to the shelf um, last year. And then it was a long layoff, a well-deserved layoff. And I just wonder on that standpoint, has it just taken her a little bit to get going? I mean, she's faced very tough horses. You mentioned idiomatic in the last two. And, and, and maybe in some ways, if you take a dare manner out of this field, the rest are more within her wheelhouse. That's the big question. So um, to me, I think she's still going to need to show a lot more than she's shown. But against this group, I think uh, another horse that if you're looking at the exotic, she makes a lot of sense. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Clement L. Hirsch. Adair Manor is just simply the horse to beat. She's been super right now. Unfortunately, the price is in there. You're going to try to maybe spice up the exotics with Desert Dawn. And Desert Dawn isn't able to usually get the best of her, right? We know she's kind of been in the minors, a lot of seconds and thirds behind her. But I just wonder with the pace set up, if she can get a piece in here. We talked about the horse on the outside, maybe needing to take that step up third off the layoff. But I think when we look at our picks here, Dan, this sort of shows you that underneath it is a very wide open betting board. And that's probably how you bet this race. If you want to do it, you key a dare manner and you try to get someone into the exotics to spice things up. 2583 for Ashley, 2164 for me. It is the grade one Clement Hirsch at Del Mar on Saturday. Good luck.